It was not a glitch. There was a massive spike in gold and silver prices in a matter of minutes, with silver especially breaking out, and it is sticking with us. It's getting real in more ways than one. I'll explain as we explore. What an amazing evening Sunday was for us at the Sunday Night Market Watch. If you were there, we track uh, every Sunday night the prices of gold and silver as they open in the Asian markets. It was a quite interesting and exciting time as we saw the prices fluctuate above and below the, the opening price. And that alone was pretty exciting. But what happened was just after I signed off, the metals complex went crazy. And within a matter of minutes, they, they sprung up almost 2% for silver and just over a half a percent for gold. Big moves in terms of dollars for both metals. And we thought it may be a glitch. I did a live stream last night immediately after an emergency special report. And I thought, well, likely they'll probably correct today. But indeed, they have stuck. And it's interesting and fascinating why they would do this, especially after the news of company coming to us from Forbes that encompasses not just gold and silver, but also other things that are shining brightly this holiday season, like spending, consumer spending. Consumerism is definitely a real thing, and people are wanting to get Christmas uh, gifts in. The 2023 holiday season is officially upon us, and already records are being shattered. That's right. If you enjoy content like this where I talk about the precious metals complex, but also what can affect the gold and silver prices, and you'd be surprised, and I think this very well could give us a hint as to what is affecting them today. Um, I hope you would consider subscribing to the channel and pressing that thumbs up button if you find this information valuable. Black Friday deal hunters in the U.S. shelled out more than $9.8 billion online, which is a 7.5% 7 7 increase over last year, according to Adobe Analytics. Consumers may have spent an additional $10 billion over the weekend and could spend a massive $12 billion before it's all said and done today, Cyber Monday, which would also be a new record, according to Adobe. And this year appears to be, appears to be one of, contradiction, of contractions. Uh, I, it's a resilience consumer. The U.S. retail sales are well above the five-year average. Uh, but I also see a looming sense of economic uncertainty, according to a recent bank rate survey. Around half of American adults say they are worse off economically today than when President Joe Biden took office, with nearly 70 percent citing an increase in the cost of living, which is part of the reason why we're seeing increased spending. Our, we get less with our dollars these days, so they have to spend more just to maintain in order to meet the obligations for Christmas. But you would think that the spending would pull back a little bit as that is what uh, the Federal Reserve is wanting to do to stifle economic activity. Well, it hasn't happened so far. The 2023 narrative then isn't just about holiday cheer and shopping sprees. It's about how consumers are hedging their bets against economic unpredictability, turning to real assets like gold, silver, and to an extent, Bitcoin as well, too, because Bitcoin's seen recent highs as well, too. Uh, so they're looking at to find uh, alternatives out there. So if you look at the outlook for holiday spending, according to Deloitte's holiday retail survey, consumers are poised to spend an average of $1,652 this holiday season. That's a 14% increase compared to last year. Those making $200,000 or more plan to spend more than $4,000 up from the average around $3,200 last year. These figures eclipse pre-pandemic spending levels, suggesting a return to normalcy. But this is where it starts to shift focus here, folks, because we are not in a normal situation. And with inflation leering over, people are still spending, but they're spending more to get the same amount. But spending is up. And this is only one side of the coin. 
A closer look reveals a more nuanced story. While 95% of consumers plan to purchase during the holiday season, there's a marked shift in priorities. Non-gift purchases, such as holiday decorations, are also on the rise. And self-gifting is becoming increasingly popular, with 75% of consumers expected to buy gifts for themselves. Some of these things are probably needed, but you look at gold and silver, and they are looking as hedges, and some of those may be gifts. In fact, it'll be interesting to see what some of the numbers, there has been some word out there that there's been some records broken from bullion dealers as well, too. It'll be very interesting to see how that plays out to see if that's the case. That could be in part of what's leading to the, uh, the rise in gold and silver prices. A Reuters report re uh, highlights a mixed bag of expectations among U.S. retailers with major players in apparel, electronics, and home improvement sectors bracing for a challenging season. Sales in recent quarters have been a tepid and forecasts for the year have revised downwards. So this dichotomy between consumer spending and retail sentiment underscores the complexity of this year's holiday shopping landscape in which gold, silver, and Bitcoin have emerged as stars. Gold prices have been on an upward trajectory, surpassing at one time above $2,018 an ounce early Monday trading. In fact, moments before the markets close here, I'm going to give you the report on where these prices are right now. Silver is up 1.32%. That's almost one and a quarter percent increase in, in silver's price, rather. Up 32 cents for silver to $24.74. Gold is up just over a half a percentage point, 0.56% increase, up to up $11.20 at $2,014.90. Platinum is the only metal that took a hit today, down 1.4%, down 13. And palladium is up 6. Now, the rise in the prices is attributed to a weaker dollar. That's right, the dollar is weaker and a Federal Reserve that appears hesitant to continue its aggressive rate hikes. The U.S. dollar index, a measure of the greenback's value against the basket of other major currencies, has seen a notable decline, cooling over 3% since early October. And every day that the dollar index goes down is going to be good for gold and silver. No question about it. And it's going to make uh, uh, investors nervous. And I think that's one reason why they're going ahead and spending this money now before the dollar uh, starts to lose any more value. And we start to see, you know, potentially a, a stagflationary situation down the pike. People are worried about their jobs, and that's part of what leads to stagflation. High in unemployment and, uh, and, and continued and consistent and persistent, rather, inflation. The U.S. dollar index, a measure of the greenback's value against these other currencies, is on this decline. And we also have geopolitical tensions in the Middle East that are contributing to gold and silver's rising value. Furthermore, the World Gold Council reports a robust demand for the yellow metal, particularly from central banks, as we reported on this channel, which uh, purchased a record-breaking 800 tons in the first nine months of the year, representing a significant portion of the total demand. Now, let's talk a little bit about this metal, silver. It's often in gold shadow. In fact, we see it work against gold from time to time as an industrial metal. It's carving out its own niche. According to Metals Focus Weekly Update, industrial demand for the white metal is expected to hit an all-time high this year. That's right, this year. We're not talking about, about next year now, but we are heading into the last month of the year. And we're talking about industrial demand taking, taking a turnaround. Uh, and that is given the lackluster demand for silver in the form of coins and bars and rounds. That's right. Those types of silver products indeed are have subsided a bit, but you know what? It may be short-lived, as we have seen uh, on this Black Friday. And if if the rumor is true, well, we very well could see silver start to shine again, and we may see maybe a potential uh, short squeeze or a silver squeeze on the physical bullion market. We'll see how that plays out. Nonetheless, it is pretty amazing to see, despite the economic headwinds, demand in sectors like photovoltaics remains strong. And solar panels, folks, the strong industrial offtake keeps silver's demand at historically high levels, even as the market remains in deficit. 
and even as we anticipate a coming recession. Keep in mind, any kind of legislation that is, uh, you know, putting uh, government, uh, public sector money towards photovoltaics is essentially recession proof or recession, recession resistant. And that is the potential here that we see with silver. So it's a pr pretty amazing. Uh, and with Bitcoin at a, at a, a, a pretty much a year high, you know, we did see it climb above $38,000 on Friday. But the thing is about Bitcoin, a lot of people are flocking a lot of, a lot of money towards it. And uh, the thing is that Bitcoin uh, and everything that's behind it provides different kinds of risks. Um, it may not have, it has counterparty risk of a different form. Uh, whereas most people that want decentralized uh, investments look towards things that are hard assets that have no counterparty risk of any kind, of any sort. When you store gold and silver in your home, by the way, or, um, you know, you have single party risk, which is why I, why I encourage folks to have people you can trust to where the counterparty that may be involved in it is somebody that you trust maybe implicitly with your life. If you have somebody like that, it's definitely good to do to be able to maintain and manage and be able to provide a more stable, secure place to store your precious metals. But nonetheless, that's an amazing thing to see here today. The dollar index, uh, you know, lower and gold and silver have maintained the massive surge that we saw. It's getting real out there, folks. And as we head towards the end of the year, uh, it's hard to say where gold and silver could go in terms of its price. You know, this massive jump that we saw, I thought for sure by now we'd see some side of, some sort of consolidation and pullback. Uh, I still think it could happen, but I think we're going to probably maintain some higher lows through the end of the year. Um, what will that be mean? Well, highly unlikely, I think, even at this point for silver to reach $28 an ounce, which is what my prediction was. But gold very well could maintain $2,000 an ounce through the end of the year. It'll be very interesting to see, but there's your market report. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. Hope you found this video informative, insightful, and educational. Would like to extend a multitude of gratitude to each and every one of you for taking the time to watch and to encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and...